a youth exchange program is, we're going to introduce you to a few of the participants that it truly affects the most, that it affects all year long. And we're going to let them tell you a little bit about what their experience has been. And um, uh, their reflections on their year, for the inbounds, maybe some of the most interesting things that have happened, for the outbounds, kind of what their hopes and thoughts are about what's going to happen next year. We also have a host parent that's going to talk to you and the parent of an outbound. So let's get started. Manuela Miguel. I'm Manuela Miguel, I'm from Brazil, and I'm living in Bill right now, and my rarity club is Bill Rarity Club. And when I found out I was coming to Idaho, I didn't know anything about it, and I was like, oh, let's look up, and what I found out was potatoes, <laughs> and <laughs> really cold. <laughs> so I was like, and then I found out there was like a small population and everything. But I decided not to judge by the numbers, since in Brazil I live in a town with 200 people, and 200,000 people, and I was <laughs> and I was going to view that's like 4,000 people, so it's kind of different. But I decided not to judge by the numbers, and when I got in view, I had the most like wonderful experience in my life, because. The second day I got there, I went to my volleyball practice and I met the like really wonderful girls and I made awesome friendships. And so I gotta say that one of the most fun parts of my exchange is that I got to be homecoming queen. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of a funny story because I didn't know, like in Brazil we don't have football, we don't have homecoming, and I got there and then they nominated my name and I was like, oh, okay, and I was, yeah, and then I was like, I know, and I won't make it to finals, and then I got out of the classroom and then I made it to finals, and then I went home and I was living with Elizabeth and Jim, and I was like, hey, guess what, I'm a homecoming king candidate, and they're like, oh, that's so cool, but we gotta talk to you. You know we're not gonna win, right, because you're such an exchange student, and like, you're, it's prom, it's like, it's homecoming queen, and it's such a big deal, and like, people are gonna vote for their friends and not for the exchange student. I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. But anyway, clap for the winner anyway. And I was like, okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I went there and I walked down the field, and the freshman princess was nominated, and then I clapped how my mom and dad, my mom and dad said, and then the, Junior and then the sophomore, they're all nominated, and I clap as my mom and dad said. And then <laughs> that's prom queen, and I clapped as my mom and dad said. And then I realized that was me. <laughs> I was like, oh, Manuela Miguel, I'm coming queen. I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. And My name is Jordan Tomshock, and I'll be going to Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be, uh, okay. I wanted to be a youth exchange student to expand my horizons beyond the small town that I'm from. Uh, the Rigby has about 3,000 people, and uh, Taipei has about 7 million. <laughs> so it was going to be a very big change. Uh, when I was deciding to be an exchange student, a lot of the reasons why I wanted to be was because I've always wanted to view the world from as many different angles as I could, and I figured being an exchange student is a very good way to view the world from a different person's view. Um, when I learned I would be going to Taiwan, I was both happy and nervous, because uh, learning Chinese is really, really hard. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I, would, I knew I'd be able to teach myself just basic stuff before I left, so... Hopefully I'll be able to survive the first couple weeks while I'm there and learn more. I'm, I, I am excited about learning Chinese because it's going to be very useful and respected because of its difficulty, you know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, another challenge will be culture shock. Uh, not having any Christmas at all. Uh, and, you know... But <laughs> I hope to be just as happy in Taiwan celebrating the Chinese New Year as I am here celebrating Christmas by the time I get back. 
<laughs> and uh, well, when I was first applying to be an exchange student, I wanted somewhere rural that spoke English so I could, you know, easily blend in. And... <laughs> <laughs> that, I, that idea quickly died. And, uh, <laughs> I decided that if I was going to learn the most, I'd go to somewhere that was the most different from where I'm from, and so I decided on Taiwan. Um, being away from home will no doubt be hard, but when I feel homesick and disconnected, I will try to get out and do new things, try new foods, meet new people, all the stuff that I'm there to do, which will hopefully <laughs> distract me from... I, I didn't speak the language. It will keep me focused I didn't on what's have going any on friends. I went to school like, hi. Um, I didn't know anybody, and... It's really, really hard to make friends, to create relationships, like the worst. But my family support me so much, so I, th I thank them a lot for that. Um, what can I say? Yeah, so my year was great because I uh, learned to trust myself a lot. Now, every time I try to do something, I'm like, no, Justine, you can't do it, do it. You went in a totally different country with a totally new language, new culture, and it's been nine months that you're here now, and you did it. So now I'm not scared to try stuff. I really trust myself, and it just helped me so much with everything. And I have a story to share with you, my first day in America. <laughs> so I arrived in the airport in Salt Lake City at midnight, so I had a huge, huge day. I was so tired, so many luggage, everything. I came, no family. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, I went outside, inside, outside, inside for one hour, looked for my family, nobody. And so someone saw me and came talk to me, like, but I didn't understand anything. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what to say. So I hit the number on my Belgium phone, but I didn't have the right number, because your seven is my one, and I had misunderstood the six and zero, so anyway, I had wrong number. So when he tried to call my mom, this, this is a wrong number, this number doesn't exist. I was like, what? I don't have five here, I don't know. I don't understand. And, so I gave them the name, we looked on the internet, finally we found them, but my host mom was coming home from California, and my host dad was in Pocatello, so they couldn't come pick me up. So they just rented a, a room in the hotel, and I spent the night there alone, on Skype, with my family. <laughs> and my host family came pick me up the next day, so it was just the worst day of my life. <laughs> I mean, when it happens to me, it was just so upset, so scared. I was like, what, what I'm doing here, seriously. But now I'm just saying it's so funny. Because <laughs> it's the good beginning. It's like, that's the experience. That's what I learned here. So, and I want to thank Rotary a lot for supporting me and for giving me the opportunity to be an exchange student because it was the best year of my life. And I'm kind of excited to come back, see my family, my friends, party, but I'm kind of sad too because now I have friends, a lot of friends, I have family here, like a totally new family, and it's going to be really hard to leave, so, but that's okay, I have two months left, so I'm going to enjoy it a lot, but thanks Rotary. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You've learned from Justine just how important our host families are, our host parents, and so Kevin is going to talk a little bit about being a host parent. You know, uh, Amy and I have uh, uh, two children, boys uh, 12 and 11, and she said, don't cry. I'll talk. If he cries, I'll talk. You talk. Okay, I'll talk. I... <laughs> Honey. At any rate, we now have a <laughs> we have a 19-year-old son in Quito, Ecuador, and uh, the four months that he spent with us was just amazing. And I, but I have to confess to you, as most of you know, I was governor last year. That's a very busy job, and uh, you know what were we doing taking on an exchange student? And part of it was 
well, we ought to do our part and demonstrate that this can be done. And of course, as all things with Rotary, uh, you get so much more than you give. And we had this amazing experience uh, with this young man. And I, I just tell you one story before I let Amy tell a story. But one of the experiences was he had his 18th birthday. And so obviously we had a birthday party. And he invited his friends, which were not only high school students from Boise High School, but also a half a dozen exchange students from all corners of the world who came from all over District 5400 to join us. And we had the student from Taiwan, we had a um, student from, Frank, from uh, Spain, Brazil. and Brazil, Woo! and the American kids that were there. And it was just this, this wonderful experience. And now we're, and the other, well, why don't you talk about his parents in the graduation? You want to tell that story? Uh, when you got sick? No, not that part. Oh. <laughs> so the extraordinary thing about Jonathan, our son from Ecuador, is that he also graduated from Boise High School, which is an extraordinary achievement because he did it in English. He had to make up credits that he hadn't completed, junior uh, American history, he had to take U.S. history. Um, so we got to nag him about lots of stuff besides his chores and stuff, but doing his online classes. and. We had the distinct pleasure of going to high school graduation with him, with his cap and gown, with his class at Boise High School, and we couldn't have been prouder. His parents came to visit to join us. Those of you who are here at district conference may recall they spoke because this district has done projects with their community in Ecuador. So not only do we have him as a family member, we have them as, a family, as family members also, and it was a really, truly extraordinary thing for us now to have family in Bahia de Caracas, Ecuador. That's, That's true, and your Spanish is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it truly was, uh, uh, you know, you say, geez, we don't have any kids in high school, and we're busy, and how are we gonna do this? And he just fed in and became part of the family, and you know, we went to track meets, we went to, we. He took up rugby. The kid played every sport. He wasn't gonna. He was gonna experience the thing full bore. His about his fourth day of snowboarding, we came to Sun Valley, and by, if you know the mountain, I took him down Limelight because he wanted to. And that's a one that's about like this. We have video of him doing it on his nose. Uh, <laughs> we just had an amazing experience, and we've been really blessed and rewarded. Uh, by having him in our home, and it was truly amazing. So thanks for this opportunity to all of you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I think that if, if those of you who have not been host parents talk to the folks that have been, and how many of you in the audience have been host parents? Okay, multiple. Look at all of you. Look at all of you. Big hand. Um, I think that you'll find that it is truly one of the most rewarding experiences that that you can do. Jim and I started being host parents after our son went to Norway eight years ago. This coming fall we'll have our ninth child, our ninth exchange student. You know, I always thought that Jim should have a dozen children, not with me necessarily, but <laughs> a dozen children. Well, you know, as it turns out, we had two original ones plus nine, you know, 11, one more to go. So, good change. Outbound parent, her son, uh, James, is in Sweden this year, and she's just going to share a little bit about what it's like from her perspective. Hi, I'm Vicki Page, and I'm from the Emmett Rotary Club. Um, our son James, uh, as she said, is in uh, Sweden this year. He's in Umeå. It's in the northern part of Sweden on the east coast, and um, when we found, well, James had said a few years ago, I really want to do an exchange program. And I said, that sounds great, so go online and figure out how much it costs. And there's very expensive exchange programs out there. And so I said, well, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to go on exchange. And then I became a Rotarian, and I found out about the Rotary Youth Program. I went, hey, this is, you know, you'll have, we'll have to look into this. And so we did, and, and James said, yes, I want to do that, so filled out the application. Our uh, club interviewed him and said, okay, yes, you're, uh, you know, you're good to go to the next level. And so he went to Buell and did the 
interview process there and and uh, it became a little more real to us this possibility that he might be going overseas someplace because we heard from rebounds right that uh, kids that had been they had all been in Brazil as it turned out and and so to hear their stories so James was accepted to it and we thought yay this is you know this is so wonderful and then when he was at McCall then he found out he was going to Sweden his first choice was Italy um, but he was okay with the Scandinavian countries too so as the days uh, rolled by and we got closer to when he was going to be leaving we were so excited uh, for him but it was so hard to think that he would be gone and little I've got two older children and they live in Washington State but that's just a day's drive away or just an easy phone call away so not so it's easier to be apart from my kids there but to think that James would be half a world away was it was hard to think about that. But I knew that he would be well taken care of in Rotary and that the program is so good that we had no need for any worries or concerns about it. When the day came that James left, um, well, he did his, his language learning and, and I really do encourage you uh, to really work hard on the language because when you get to the foreign country too, um, a lot of people in other countries speak English, so it's easier for the outbound kids to, um, I don't know, use English as a crutch, I suppose. James was really determined that he was not going to, that he was going to insist that everybody speak Swedish to him, and that hasn't really happened, and so it's been, uh, it's, it's just, it, it, it's a process. That's probably the hardest thing about being away from home, I think. Um, we sent him on his way and he went off to Sweden. We took to heart the recommendations from Rotary that you not, as outbound parents, that you not expect to or look to have weekly conversations or even more with your children, um, to not expect to have frequent emails with them, and so we actually didn't speak, James left August 1st, and we actually didn't speak to him until Thanksgiving. So it was a really, part of it was just, um, he just didn't get his host parent's phone number to us, so I couldn't call him. <laughs> um, but, uh, and we didn't, we, we didn't, uh, my brother had been over to Norway on a, on a business trip, so he gave James his, uh, uh, the cell phone that he had, so that was nice, because then James had a cell phone over there, so he could be in contact with his new friends and his host family there and everything. But, so that was a really long time, and I have to say that um, when we connected on Thanksgiving, the tears did start, because it was, it was just so good to hear his voice. Um, we did see through Facebook what he was doing a little bit. Facebook is a, you know, is a wonderful tool. Um, so we got a little bit of feel for the things that he was doing over there. And um, I don't know, he said that he was a little bit homesick. He did really well on the homesickness. Um, he got involved with school. He got involved, just, uh, you know, made work to make new friends and everything. His host parents were really good to, <coughs> really good to him. Their son was, is now still in Sebastopol, California. Um, he's with his second host family now and their daughter's in Japan. So that was uh, kind of scary when the earthquake happened there and everything, but she's fine. So um, I don't know that he was so homesick for us as that I was homesick for him, you know, to not be home at Christmas time. It seemed pretty quiet with just our youngest son, Andy, at home, and it was kind of like, what do we do? <laughs> so, but it, was, but it was good, and I was real lucky to be able to go over to Sweden um, in March, and James flew, we went to Oslo, and James, we arranged with, through Rotary for James to fly down to Oslo, and we spent a couple of days there, and then took the train to Stockholm was so crazy. We were uh, at the central 
uh, subway station in Stockholm, and we bump into another Rotary Exchange student there, you know, all the way across the world, and she was uh, from America also. And so that was really pretty wild, and, and uh, they were able to have a fika, which is uh, get together for coffee and uh, pastries and all. So the kids did that one night while we did some other sightseeing around. It was really hard when we left to come back home again um, to say goodbye to James. Another hard part is when your student goes away, you have to really watch to not continue to parent them <laughs> while, they're, while they're far away. Even getting ready for our trip over, um, I would say, James, make sure you bring this and don't forget, Mom, I've been doing this on my own now for seven months, so, <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, and he had graduated from high school already, so he's, this is, this is just such a great time for him over there, and as much as we've missed having him at home, um, we're just so proud of him that he wanted to do this and that he's uh, done well and that we had this op that James had this opportunity which really is such a life-changing opportunity for him he wouldn't have had that without Rotary and so um, I'm so thankful to Rotary and the Barkers for doing such a great job on the youth exchange program such a great job James coming back uh, July 19th he'll be back here and then next spring he's planning to go back to Sweden to go to college so <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you, you've all been remarkably patient as we as we parade our, our stars here through. So I appreciate it. We have one more uh, youth speaker that we want you to hear from, and that's Jean from France. <laughs> 